Mr. Minatsakanian, thank you for this unique opportunity thank to have you. an interview before starting Yerevan Global Forum. So the first question, the international recognition and condemnation of the Armenian genocide has been one of the foreign policy priorities of the Republic of Armenia since its independence. But from some point, it seems that the foreign policy agenda with regards genocides has become wider, encompassing the prevention. I would be interested to hear your opinion as a person who heads the Armenian Foreign Ministry with regards to this transformation. Well, thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, you know, the very important question about 100 years on, mm -hmm. the question of the Armenian genocide continues to rattle our minds, to challenge our conscience. Uh, and uh, it's always a difficult question to look at the young generation of Armenians all over the world who still carry in them that pain of uh, the genocide. And of course it's a question why after 100 years would this be so painful to the Armenian people? And the answer I think is in the very plain and sad fact that it's denied justice. But at the same time, 100 years on, when you look at the Armenian people who were not supposed to be on the surface of this earth 100 years ago, today it's a confident nation in full command of its identity, successful all over the world, uh, with uh, all its in institutions of identity intact and strong, and with the uh, re-establishment of our sovereignty and state on top of it, I think we have, this has also been a transformation for our nation from that of a victim to one of a victor. Uh, the, we know the consequence and pain of, and the depth of the crime of genocide. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a moral duty before humanity to fight against this crime, to fight against discrimination, against such acts of violations of rights of the human being, which in their essence carry the elements of genocidal tendencies, and to confront them at an early stage, at an early phase, because one genocide is one too many. because. Uh, we have still, after 70 years of the adoption of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, we have seen too many instances of repetition of this crime, and that the risks of genocide have never been disappearing. Mm -hmm. And this is as acute as ever. Even today's headlines would indicate the risks of genocidal tendencies and genocides. And the consistent work against this crime is a duty. Duty for every human, for every nation. We have become part of that community of nations who are very much in the leadership of uh, keeping the banner of fight against genocide, of fight against this crime, very firm and uh, to mobilize the international community towards confronting this crime and acting without interruption to detect and prevent the crime. So this is what we are driven with by in our conscience and in our policies as a state and as a nation and as peoples. And as a nation who survived genocide, yes? As a nation who survived, that's what I was saying, mm -hmm. as a nation who has been going through its own transformation from a victim to a victor. Thank you. So let's speak about Global Forum. It means global action on the part of international community with combined and coordinated efforts at local and global levels aimed at early detection and prevention of genocides and crimes against humanity. At the same time, we are witnessing a serious decline in the commitment of states towards multilateralism, including in the area of human rights protection. Can this be considered as a warning sign what measures could be taken on the multilateral platforms to develop the early prevention? mechanisms? Uh, yes, you're right about the many challenges mm -hmm. towards the sound 
foundations uh, of uh, protecting basic human rights. Uh, the national interest cannot be detached from the important priority of protection and promotion of human rights and fundamental freedoms. They are at the heart of prevention. Every single human rights violation may be looked at on its own merit as a violation or, may, or should even, in fact, should be taken into a broader context of the risks of such deterioration if they are persistent, that they may bring about genocidal risks, they may bring about such, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, such a uh, fall, such a, you know, uh, deterioration at which things go out of control. Mm -hmm. And then we catch up with the headlines of mass atrocities, crimes, and the crime of genocide, ultimately. That, as you understand, is the ultimate crime. The crime which rattles our conscience, which is so deep, which is so bad, that no nation can come out of it easily. So early prevention, detection of the crime, starts at the specific attention to the nature of violation of human rights and the risks of, its de of the deterioration to an extent that things go out of control. So yes, multilateral level is very, very important. The international community, 70 years since the adoption of the convention, has, been, uh, uh, has had this in its agenda, on its agenda, but it never stops. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is such a, you know, issue that if we do let it go, if we do let us lose um, our attention, we will be finding us in a situation where it's too late. It's too late and we will be uttering the words never again by not meaning it. So the multilateral level has been and remains very important. It's a bad time for multilateralism, but there is no way we can give up. There is no way we can give up. The prevention, in fact, the multilateral, as much as it is important, the prevention starts at the national level. It's the responsibility of every nation, every government in the world, to, pre to create such sound foundations of protection that they can uh, confront the risks of uh, deterioration at an early stage. So early prevention, early detection, early warning signs, every, every such human rights violation should serve as a warning sign against deterioration. So early prevention is at the heart of our action, at the heart of our concept of prevention. And we have been very consistent in this. We have been very consistent for 20 years now. In 1998, we have, we have uh, presented a resolution in the Human Rights Commission and subsequently in the General Assembly mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the anniversary of the genocide prevention. And subsequently, it evolved into a much broader you know, body of soft law through the adoption of subsequent resolutions in the uh, Human Rights uh, Council and uh, uh, in the General Assembly uh, on uh, mobilizing the international community in uh, a common action, in a you know, um, consolidated action towards prevention. Uh, we have many partners. Uh, there are many nations in the world who share the view and the vision on prevention, and we work very closely with so many partners uh, globally. But the national level, obviously, is at the heart of prevention. Thank you. Uh, the responsibility of governments to protect their populations from the crime of genocide is undeniable. Uh, but what should be the role of civil society, academia and scholars, education practitioners? Uh, would you agree that awareness raising is also important along with building the legal and institutional capacities for prevention? Absolutely. 
you know, the governments do bear the primary responsibility. Uh, the international community, in cooperation for prevention, creates this, uh, you know, action uh, or facilitates the action for the national governments to work towards this objective. It raises awareness. But when it comes to the evolution of the concept of prevention, mm -hmm. you understand that the role of the academia is indispensable. The genocide scholars, the human rights lawyers, many other practitioners uh, and, 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 and people in the academia have been so fundamental in developing the body of law and, and theory and understanding and concept of prevention that they basically they feed our understanding and our action at the government level. When it comes to civil society and the human rights institutions and, and, and the, and the non-governmental organizations, the various bodies who work on the ground, they are the detectors of, uh, of deterioration, detectors mm -hmm. of human rights violations. They, they are the ones who raise the voice. They are the ones who insist on the consistency of human rights protection. We shouldn't forget the role of the media mm -hmm. because this is the way in which you know, the signals, the flags are raised and the government attention is invited that what is happening, whatever deterioration of human rights is happening, is bearing risks of uh, crime, of genocide, crime, of uh, the crime, the, the ultimate crime. So without so many instances when it were exactly the civil society organizations, exactly the, uh, the activists on the ground who were uh, feeding the information, bringing it to the attention of the governments, bringing it to the attention of the international community, raising the uh, alarm, and uh, insisting and demanding an action on the part of the national governments, on the part of uh, the international community. It's uh, undeniable. Mm -hmm. And the last question, this year we host the third uh, global yes. forum against the crime of uh, genocide with the topic of education, culture and museums as uh, components of prevention efforts. We see quite an impressive list of speakers from representatives of international organizations to scholars and practitioners uh, who will share their views and approach uh, as to how the education and culture can or should contribute to prevention of genocides and other crimes against humanity. Are there any plans to continue the relevant global forums as contribution of Armenia to the academic discussion on the best ways and means of prevention of genocides. <laughs> we have been building this platform of the global forum since 2015. Uh, it is our contribution to this international action to work together towards developing and strengthening the, the agenda of prevention internationally, globally. You're absolutely right. This is a global action. Mm -hmm. This is not a bilateral issue. This has never been a bilateral issue. What we deal with in our bilateral agenda is a separate thing. But the global forum is about the global action. We are just making one more contribution together with our acts uh, in developing the soft law. This is uh, an opportunity we want to create through this platform together the international community, the practitioners, the academia, the, the, the scholars, uh, the civil society, uh, the governments, to gather them together uh, to take stock mm -hmm. of uh, the collective action and collective thinking on the theme of, of prevention and prepare grounds for the next steps in uh, the uh, international uh, effort uh, to strengthen the prevention agenda. Uh, we're not the only ones. There are many actions, different actions on the part of different actors, governmental or non-governmental. This is yet another contribution from us, from Armenia, to provide that platform. We are very excited about the way in which the international community has been uh, responding uh, to our initiative. We are looking forward to the opening of the forum tomorrow. Uh, we have a very impressive list of uh, participants. We are very happy to welcome uh, the special advisor of the 
uh, Secretary General of the United Nations on the prevention of genocide, and many, many, many other very important participants from uh, various corners uh, of, uh, of this community. Uh, and uh, this is, you know, it's, it's an important platform in developing our thinking so that we can take it further to the next step. Uh, and, and, and create new legal, institutional, you know, pillars mm -hmm. for further instilling the prevention, the capacity of prevention. Uh, it never stops. As I was saying, no, unfortunately, it's heartbreaking as it is, never again has been repeated so many times. The risks of genocide have not disappeared. The, the risks of atrocities have never disappeared. And this is a challenge to our conscience, and this is a, a call for action, a consistent, persistent call for action. So should the, third, should the forums continue, they must continue, and we must keep up our commitment. Thank you very much. Thank you.